Uh, hello everyone. Um, so in this video I'm going to um, discuss the difference between single slit and double slit uh, diffraction patterns. And this is one of the things that, um, that I promised in one of the videos. And I actually didn't keep that promise. So here it is. Single slit diffraction. And um, <clears throat> in the case of double slit, we call it double slit interference. But by now, um, you um, you probably learned that uh, well interference and diffraction. They basically say um, they basically uh, are saying similar things. Um, so for this um, discussion, let's actually um, consider a single slit, uh, which is a rectangular slit here. And um, we're going to consider this um, the height of the rectangular slit as uh, d. And for double slit, what we're going to do, um, we're going to consider these double slits with um, separation um, uh, between these two slits, the same dimension, capital D. Um, and then uh, this, there is this height, and we're going to use a different symbol here, and this is going to, uh, we, we will use a ds. Um, so d sub s, in the case of double slit, we will assume that d sub s is actually much less than the wavelength of light, so that um, the light from um, a single slit in this case is actually um, a spherical wave, or a circular wave in this uh, long uh, rectangular case, rectangular case, to a good approximation. So, um, <clears throat> in essence, we don't need to worry about uh, this um, d sub s in the double slit problem. And so, um, uh, when you actually um, describe this um, diffraction uh, in the plane, let's say um, this is, uh, let me try to remember what we did in previous lectures. So this is um, y-axis is al along the uh, vertical axis here, and the z-axis is um, is uh, the the line connecting the center of this slit to the center of the screen, and we're describing now the diff um, this diffraction within the y-z plane in both cases. Okay, so then um, in this case y-axis is like this, and then z-axis the axis going like going like that to the screen, so it, it, we we describe this uh, um, light scattering in the y z plane, and let's write down the formula for <coughs> single slit diffraction. So that's um, i equals i zero. Um, let's see. Let's try to remember this. Science square. Um, I think I used the symbol beta over 2, beta over 2 squared. So that's the formula for single slit. And for double slit, um, for double slit, uh, similar um, expression except it's a cosine. Um, so here I'm going to write um, delta over 2 because that's what we did in our in our theories, um, and so we have two two formulas. This one for the single slit, and this one for the double slit. And now um, the the important quantity is this uh, phase shift beta equals um, k d sine theta. And what's the physical meaning of this? This is the beta is the phase phase difference um, for the two lights that uh, appear on the screen. One light coming from the lower edge, and the other light coming from the upper edge of the single slit. So you can um, you know look at those two light rays and and consider the phase difference between those two rays. So that's beta. In this case, in the double slit case, delta is given by k 
small d sine theta in our previous notations, but now notice that here I'm using the same d, capital D, for the um, um, for the slit uh, separation. So here, delta is basically the same as um, beta in this other case. So I'm comparing these two um, with the same dimension, uh, capital D, capital D. So that's uh, they, they are the same, delta and beta, they are the same. And um, um, here also, what is the meaning of delta? Delta is the phase difference between those two light rays that arrive from the lower slit to the screen, or a fixed point on the screen with an angle theta, and, um, and um, the upper, um, the, the light ray coming from the upper slit to the same point on the screen. So we have two light rays arriving <coughs> from the lower slit and from the upper slit. And you ask the question, what is the phase difference between those two lights? Delta is the answer. Okay, so um, let's plot this, this function, uh, these two functions in the same, um, let's plot these two functions in the same um, uh, frame. Um, um, because we define these uh, dimensions to be the same, we, we can actually compare them in a convenient way. So now beta is delta and delta is beta in this discussion on this particular slide. So I'm going to use, well, I'm just going to use beta as my uh, axis here and then i. So let's go, go ahead and um, plot this um, um, single slit um, diffraction pattern. Um, let me use the color red for that. And so um, it goes like this and then goes like that and then goes like that and, and dies down, you know, pretty quickly. So um, here the value is 2 pi and there um, 4 pi and then there's 6 pi. Well, I'm a little bit of, you know, a little bit of trouble here. I, I didn't do a good job of spacing these things right, but you get the idea. Um, now let's go to um, the double slit. Double slit, let me use the color blue. Um, and before I do the double slit, let me make it clear that this y-axis is i divided by i0. So, and then this is 1 is here. And so let's go to the double slit. And um, in the case of double slit, remember when delta equals 2 pi times integers, um, it's, it's actually maximum. So that's the central maximum agrees, but notice that at 2 pi, you have another maximum. Okay, so that's, um, it's basically we were, the, we were, we we're plotting cosine square beta over 2. And um, so that function looks like this. And then it goes down to 0 and then go up there. Well, sorry about my crude, um, my, my um, graphing is not perfect, but I think you get the idea. I'm, I'm plotting the positive beta part only because, you know, the negative part is the same. It's a mirror reflection uh, of, of, this, uh, of this part, so because these uh, intensity functions are even functions of beta or delta. And so that, there you go. That's the difference between double slip pattern and uh, <coughs> single slip pattern. You can see that um, except for the central maximum, the maximum and minimum positions are actually um, um, are not um, the same. They're actually the opposite. What I mean by that is the first minimum of the single slit actually is first, I mean the second maximum of the double slit, and then this maximum of, of, of the single slit, the approximate maximum of the single slit actually corresponds to minimum of the double slit. And so from 2 pi and on, you, you see that um, um, maximum and minimum, they, they are swapped. Um, 
although uh, for the single slit uh, the maximum is not exactly 3 pi it's actually near 3 pi and you know maximum here the the third maximum is not exactly 5 pi but it's near pi phi uh, 5 pi um, uh, another thing is that the intensity uh, modulation here is completely uh, periodic uh, for the double slit, but for the single slit, the, the central peak is very bright compared to other um, maximum peaks, and um, central peak is also twice broader uh, than other uh, maximum peaks, and the intensity dies down pretty quickly. So this is like 5%, 2%. Of the original peak, so um, <clears throat> so that's the um, that's another important difference. The intensity pattern is a strong function of beta in the single slit case, whereas in the double slit case, it's actually a periodic function of beta. But of course, um, we are uh, ignoring the you know, slow variation of i zero in both cases as a function of theta and r. So um, if you want to um, find what they are, please go to my um, double slit lecture, double slit interference lecture to find what it is. Um, um, so um, that um, so these are the differences between the uh, single slit and double slit um, uh, diffraction patterns.